exercise 2.5, and 2.5 is on page 50 and 51, and leads us to learning objective number 5. So let's read the question here, make sure we know what we're doing. Urban Autoglass specializes in the repair and replacement of windshields for passenger vehicles. Variable and fixed costs related to installation activities for the most recent month, July, are listed below, and we have uh, a number of variable expenses, and we have a number of uh, fixed expenses along with uh, some information about the number of windshields installed. So we've got a lot of information. Let's see what's being asked of us. Required, number one, calculate the per unit amounts for each of the variable expense and fixed expense items in July. So we need the per unit amount. So we have our variable costs and we have direct materials. I'm just going to shorten it, okay? Direct materials. We have direct labor, and it says one hour per installation. We're not going to worry about that too much. And we have indirect materials. And um, we're going to have totals. And I'm just, I'm just uh, replicating what's already written there. And we see that our direct materials totaled $200,000. $200, our direct labor was $30,000. And our indirect uh, materials were $10,000. And what we need to come up with is a per unit number. How much in direct materials, if we spent $200,000, how much did we spend per windshield? Well, for that, we need the number of windshields installed during July. And we can see at the very top, it tells us, at the very top of the blue chart, it tells us that July we installed 1,000 windshields. So our variable costs, understand that costs vary with volume. So every time volume increases, our costs increase. So if our direct materials was a total of 200,000, and we installed 1,000 windshields, we can easily see that if we take 200,000 divided by 1,000, it's $200 per windshield. So if we add one more windshield, this should go up to 200,200. If we add two more, it would be 200,400. Do you see where I'm going with that? It's variable. It varies with volume. The next one, direct labor, was $30,000. Divided by the 1,000, uh, we get $30 is what it costs us in labor to install one windshield. And indirect materials, we again divide that by 1,000, we get $10. So if we add this up, it, our variable costs per windshield installed is $240. Let's move on to the fixed costs now because it asks us to do the same there. We have the supervisor's wage. Supervisor's wage. We have the scheduler's wage. I'm just going to shorten it to sketch. The scheduler's wage. And we have warehouse expense. The warehouse expense, which is, uh, which is fixed. And our totals here are $4,000 for the month of July. This is just for the month of July. $4,000 for the supervisor's wage. $2,000 for the scheduler's wage. And $5,000 for warehouse expense. And we need the per unit amount, so we do the same thing. We'll just divide each of these numbers by $1,000. So we'll get 4, 2, and 5. So that gives us an $11 cost per windshield in fixed costs. So it costs us $240 in variable costs. So if we install one more windshield, we know we're going to pay another $240. But if we install one more windshield, how much are we going to pay in fixed? Do not say it's going to cost us another $11. Remember, these are fixed. If we only installed, let me, let me uh, show you something interesting over here so that you can get the idea of what fixed and variable costs are. Let's say that we only install one windshield during the month of July. One windshield. Well, our variable costs, our direct material costs would be $200. Our direct labor costs would be $30. Our indirect materials would be $10. It would cost us $240. But what would be our fixed cost per unit? Well, it would be $4,000, $2,000, and $5,000, or $11,000. Why? Because there's only one unit. All these fixed costs we have to pay anyways. Whether we install one unit or 1,000, this is constant. So at 1,000 units, our fixed cost per unit is $11. 
but at one unit, our fixed cost per unit is $11,000. So if you were selling 1,000 units a month and you wanted to price your product to break even, you would price it at $251, right? If you only installed one windshield and you need to break even, you would have to price that at $11,240. So the higher your volume goes, your variable cost per unit will stay the same, but you're spreading your fixed costs over more units. So if you ever see two competitors, one charging $299 for something and another one charging $250, you can say, look, they have the same product. The one with the lower price must be doing more volume because it allows them to get their price down lower than their competitor. So volume matters if you're going to compete on price. Volume matters, which is why you only compete on price when you're big and you have volume. So look at how much you learn in these questions, right? The real learning comes here. Well, let's keep going on the question. We're not done. We only really answered the first one, the per unit amounts. Number two, let's move on to the uh, second part of that question. Number two, uh, management expects that 1,200 windshields will be installed in August. So August, our volume will increase to $1,200. Uh, sorry, 1,200 units. And at this level of activity is within the relevant range for all variable and fixed expenses. And remember what the relevant range was. That is a range of activity over which our fixed costs will not change and our variable costs per unit will not change. So that we can expect if we go from 1,000 to 1,200, these fixed costs will basically stay the same. Okay, what's asked of us? Calculate A, the total expense, total, for each of the variable and fixed cost items above. So we're going to go over here and we're going to do two uh, columns here. We need the total expense for each one. Well, look at this. I'm going to run right down over here to fixed costs right away because this is going to be easy. At 1,200 units, I'm within the relevant range for all costs. So what's my supervisor's wage going to be if volume goes up? Exactly. It's going to be exactly the same. It's not going to change. What about my scheduler? I'm still going to pay them the same amount of money as well, and my warehouse expense will stay the same. So at 1,200 units, I'm still going to have $11,000 in fixed costs. But what about my variable costs? Well, I'm going from 1,000 units to 1,200 units. If it's $200 per unit, my costs are going to increase, right? Because it's $200 per unit no matter what. So I'd multiply the 200 by the new volume, 1,200. I'd get 240,000. I'd multiply the 30 by the new volume of 1,200. I get 36,000. And then I multiply the 10,000 by that number, I get 12,000. And you add that all up, we'll have a total variable cost of 288,000. But listen, if you divide this number by 1,200, you're still going to get $240 per windshield. Every windshield we install will cost us 240, but our fixed costs won't stay won't change. That's the difference between variable and fix. So there's part of uh, number two done. The second part, part B, says calculate the per unit amounts for each of the variable and fixed cost items above. All right, well, that's easy enough. So this is total, this is per unit. Well, we know the per unit is exactly this. So we can write 200, we can write 30, and we can write 10, and we know it's 240. But look down here, our per unit amount is going to change. The 4,000 is fixed. Spread over 1,000 units is $4 per unit. Again, the 4,000 is fixed, but now we're going to spread it over 1,200 units. So the cost per unit is now 333. This will drop to $1.67, and this will drop to $4.17 for a total of $9.17. So you'll notice that when we installed 1,000 windshields, our total cost of installation was $251. So anything over $251 uh, was profit. So we, we can compete on a cost basis of $251. Over here, when our volume increases from 1,000 to 1,200, our total costs per, per unit are now $249.17. So now we anything over that is profit. So notice that not only are we going to sell 200 more units and make profit on 200 more units, but on 
on the fir on the first thousand units, we're going to make another uh, um, markup of a dollar eighty-three. So we're going to make another eighteen hundred dollars on top of what we're doing simply by spreading our fixed costs out over more units. Isn't that beautiful? Our per total per unit cost continues to decrease. Number three, identify some factors that might cause variable cost per unit to change if the actual level of activity in a given month falls above or below the relevant range. So how, when would this change? Notice that our variable cost per unit stayed the same. Well, when would this change? Well, there are two conditions under, under uh, uh, how that would change. Number one is if volume drops. Let's say that our volume drops to, uh, let's say, uh, 300 per month. So instead of 1,000 or 1,200, we're going to install 300 units per month. Well, this 1,000 might represent a volume discount on these prices. Whereas at $300, we might find that our windshields are $215. We might find that our direct labor is probably still the same. And our indirect materials uh, might, might increase to $11. Uh, but we might be getting this 200 might represent a volume discount on 1,000 windshields a month. If our volume increases, if our volume increases to let's say 1800 a month, we might get a further discount so that 200 might go to 185. Uh, so there might be volume discounts where, where, where once we get to a certain number these prices drop. Now part two said when we went from 1000 to 1200, it used the words, and I'm going to retype, I'm going to rewrite these words so that you know them. It used the words relevant range. So whenever you see the words relevant range, that the volume of activity is within the relevant range, that means nothing. The per unit variable costs and the total fixed costs do not change. Your total costs will change, but your total fixed will not change your per unit variable will not change. Once we fall outside the relevant range, then all, all bets are off. All sorts of things can change, right? Wow, you've learned a lot in uh, 2.5, but that's, this is where the learning happens, right? That's, uh, that's 2.5.